Yeah, good evening, class. Yeah, welcome to today's um, live class. And, uh, we are um, starting proper. We are going, we are gradually going deeper into our project management. Last class, uh, we discussed um, project management at the introductory level. So today, we are going to look at um, project management from the professional like team, uh, rules and uh, responsibilities involved in project management and within the project management team level. So, and I'm going to pull our slide for uh, today's class. So what we are going to be doing today is um, we are going to be looking at the rules and um, uh, responsibilities, uh, project management career rules, and the project management um, team rules. In project management career roles, we have so many roles in project management. And um, they are project manager, we have a PMO analyst, we have a project coordinator, we have a project support officer, and we have a change uh, man management officer or change manager. So after this training you can practice as one of these you can practice as a project manager or you can practice as a pmo analyst and uh, you can practice as a project coordinator you can practice as a project support officer or you can practice as a change manager like now you are coming you are, you are a new entrant into this career so as either you start as a junior project manager, or you start as a project coordinator, or you start as um, a project support officer. These are the, the, the rules, small, small rules within project manager uh, management that can help, help you to, to spring up to uh, a full-fledged project manager. But if you are fast enough, maybe working in a high, a profile organization after this training you can just jump in and started um, working as a project manager so these are all the rules you can actually practice after this training then we'll have to look at all these rules one by one so starting um, from project manager project manager you manage, mentor, and control all areas of the project to ensure successful execution of the project, ensuring that project delivery deliverables meet quality expectation outlined at the project initiation. Implement and manage change where needed. You conduct stakeholder management through stakeholder analysis. You create a project schedule and timeline. You deliver and install technological solutions. You create a project plan to track and monitor the project budget and resources. 
you monitor project risk and issues. You manage multiple um, projects simultaneously and you help define scope and goals of the project. You help assembling project team members and uh, manage the team expectation. So these are the responsibilities you need to undertake as the project manager. You are the leader of the project. You, you drive the project. You make sure that the project is being completed on time and on budget. You, you relate with the stakeholders to make sure that the stakeholders are happy with the project uh, progress. You communicate co continuous, continuously communicate with the stakeholders. You have to do a thorough stakeholder analysis to understand the stakeholders very well, their objective, their aim. You need to understand them very well. You need to understand your team very well as the project manager through um, race metrics where you understand their, their, their cap capabilities, making sure that every team member um, have the required skill sets to deliver the tasks and deliverables. So you track the, the, the project's uh, progress. You look at project risk and issue, manage project risk and issue using rate analysis. And uh, you document it within your rate log. This is a continuous process. So these are the things a project manager do. You manage the project from the beginning to the end. That is a, a project management life cycle. A project manager involves in, pro, in projects within the whole life cycle, from the initial stage to define stage to um, execute stage to successful completion of the project. That is closure stage. So that is the project manager. That's what you do. And um, it's not, um, not too difficult if, if you understand the principles of uh, project management. So that's what project manager does. Then we look at the um, PMO analyst. Uh, PMO analysis, the, the full meaning of a PMO is a project management officer. Um, at times, people tend to, to be confused with PMO, project management officer, and uh, a project manager. There are, there, there are two different rules. A PMO is not a project manager, but they support the project manager. Actually, it depends on the organization. At times, PMO analysts have more power than the project manager. At times, you'll find out that the project manager uh, is more powerful than the PMO. But why, in so many cases, PMO tend to be more powerful than the project manager is that PMO analysis is the project management police officer. He policies the project, make sure that the project uh, is being run within the project um, or company standard. So they, 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 they monitor what the project manager does. Their duties in, uh, include uh, providing project management support. They ensure standardization within the project. They create a common set of principles and practice to help and the support within governance processes. The creation and designing of uh, project management templates, management of financial and budget forecasting, gather data and track performance of multiple uh, projects, manage resource forecast, capture project changes um, requests, and track any change implementation. This is what PMO analyst does. So looking at all these, they are, all these they are responsibilities, you can see that they are actually the, the, the police officer of uh, project management. They ensure that there is um, um, 
uh, they ensure that there is a, a project standard. Every project manager follows the due process, the best practice in managing the, pro the project, and they create a generally accepted project template for the organization so that uh, in, in, the, in the organization won't be seen different uh, templates uh, because there are so many templates to manage it, a, 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 but to have a unified project template and project um, scenario and project documentation, the PM will create a project um, template. He documents all project reports. He makes sure that every project report comes on time and uh, he, he documents all these uh, reports within the project repository. This is what the, the PMO um, analyst does. So they, are the, they, are, they manage different projects, making sure that every project, they are meeting their, their um, acceptance criteria, their, uh, their aims and objectives. This is what PMO um, analyst does. Before we don't, this role don't used to uh, be um, so important, but these days they are becoming very, very important. So many companies are now beginning to look for PMO analysts. You know, there is now highly recognized. If you go to um, job um, center or even in Google, you type PMO, you see that there are so many jobs for PMO analysts. There are so many of, of them. And after this training as a project manager, uh, as a pro uh, after this training of a uh, project management, you can actually apply uh, for the role of um, a PMO analyst. So you, you don't just um, start applying for, for project manager, you can equally apply for this because the skill sets you gather in this uh, project, uh, this uh, uh, project management uh, course, will uh, give you all the skill sets, you equip you to be able to perform as a good uh, PMO analyst. Although there is a, a course I'm preparing solely for PMO an analysis. So that's what I'm doing, because I want to, to really prepare um, a set of upcoming uh, PMO analysts. But this particular course um, have all the things you need. To, to help you kickstart your career as a PMO analyst. The next um, role um, or career law role we need to look at is um, the project coordinator. Project coordinator, they actually works under project managers. A project coordinator ensures that a particular project is progressing as it should be. A project coordinator are responsible for ensuring the schedule, budgets, and the detail of a given task are well organized. They communicate with various stakeholders to keep everyone uh, informed about any changes to the project uh, plan. They organize reporting, plan meeting, and they provide updates to the project managers. If you come in a very large uh, organization, at times that's where you see um, uh, uh, a very big project. You see a lot of uh, uh, project coordinators supporting project managers because the, the job of a project manager is not easy it, it, when the project is very, very complex. So in a very complex project, they provide the PMO to do the administrative um, uh, work for the project manager and project manager will concentrate on the leadership of the project. So these are what the uh, project coordinator does. I, for the young project managers or the new entrants, project coordinators 
uh, some of the rules they, they used to enter the industry. And it's a very good rule. It will help you to learn project management uh, methodologies, everything about project management and uh, uh, plan and delivery very well. So it's a very good, um, a, a very good way to enter your career as a young uh, project manager. The next uh, role we are going to look at here is um, project support officer. Uh, project support officer is highly uh, similar to uh, project coordinator. They support uh, with all administrative uh, tasks. They do diary management. Uh, they support in coordination and planning of uh, the projects support in coordination of reports, develop and create effective communication mechanism. So you can see they are very similar, but so many companies tend to call it different names, but I just wanted to highlight on two of them. These are the two roles that young entrants can use to enter their career. A junior project manager can be called a project support officer or a project coordinator. Then the next role is um, change managers. Change managers are very important role in project management. Very, very important. They focus on people side of um, change to minimize resistance. Because um, if you come in an organization where they are trying to introduce so many or new policies or new processes or new technologies, you find out that most of the staff, they do struggle. They don't like to transit to, to, to start learning new technologies. So, but it's the duty of the, 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 the change managers to make sure that this change resistance is being minimized. You know, I can remember those days I was um, working uh, with um, Mobitel and we are trying to transit from Sage to um, SAP. So the, most of the, 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 the staff, they are not happy because they, uh, they feel that uh, it's very difficult to start learning um, uh, SAP uh, softwares. So in, in a situation like this, is the, the change managers that come in, they highlight the importance of the new technologies, the benefits, and the rest of them, even uh, as a, a robotic process um, automation engineer, I've handled so many robotic process automation projects. And you find that the staff, uh, they, they, they become scared because uh, they are, they are, their, mindset, their mindset is that um, uh, a robotic process is that uh, the, 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 the robot is now going to take over their, their job. But it's the duty of change managers to educate them, train them, let them know the importance of uh, um, robotic processes, automating complex processes, letting them know that the robot is not taking anybody's job. They are there to support you, to increase your efficiency and uh, reduce error in your job. So these are what the change managers do does. They manage all changes to business processes, systems, and technologies. Successful implementation of change strategies to promote employee adoption. They create resistance management plans. They lead uh, change management activities. They assess change impact and assess readiness for change. They support um training needs complete change management assessment coach and support the project team 
this is the, the, the main responsibilities, the main duties of change managers. So these are the major rules you will find out in um, project management as a professional. And when you finish this training, you can fit into any of these uh, rules very well. Now, what we are going to look into now is um, pro, um, let me uh, give room for a question before we move into project uh, management team role. So if you have any question uh, based on project management uh, career role, then I can take your question before we move into this um, project management team role. Any question? Okay, I'll crack on then. There's no question, I'll crack on. Now, what we're doing, um, the next step is this uh, project management team role. Project management team roles are the, the, the roles involved in project management team. Like a proper project, you create a project, you have project team, project management team. And project management team uh, comprises of the project manager, the project sponsor, the project team members and stakeholders. This uh, four group of people comprises of the project management team. We are going to look at them one by one. And the first person or the first rule is the project manager. As we've mentioned above, the project manager is responsible for managing the project, uh, the project uh, management knowledge areas throughout the project. He is the leader. So everything we discuss remains the same. His duty doesn't change. He's the project manager. He manages the project based on budget. Uh, make sure that the project meets the uh, is being delivered within the budget, within the uh, timeline, and track the success of the project. Make sure that um, he minimizes the risk by managing the risk very well, managing stakeholders very well, and managing all the team members, giving them all the necessary support for them to do their job very well, motivating them when there is need for motivation. This is the, the duty of a project manager in a, in a project. He manages the project end to end. A full project involves within the full project life cycle. So that is the, the function of a project manager. We've just discussed project manager. So there's no need of a going um, back to repeat what I've said about project manager. So let's look at other, other um, roles within the uh, project management team. The next person here is the project sponsor. The project sponsor represents the customer or the clients of the project. The main responsibilities of a project sponsors include aligning the project within project goals, strategy, and objective, ensuring the project is properly launched and the uh, project execution, managing risk and changes while ensuring the project is uh, of a good quality. So this is uh, what the project uh, sponsor does. They align, the major one is aligning the project 
uh, within the business goal. He defined the objectives of the project. Let me uh, help the, the project managers and the other team member understand the need of the customer. The customer here means the client. So it's the duty of the sponsor to do that. And during requirement gathering, uh, he's the main person uh, the team need to gather the, the project requirement for. Even during the um, uh, project scope planning, he's the person that um, the, the project uh, team need to, to work well to, to understand the project scope. Even when we are creating project charter, he's the person that will authorize the project charter. So he's a very important person in a project. The next um, role here is uh, project team members. Team members are skilled professionals like uh, developers, business analysts, testers, designers, and all the uh, project um, uh, cross, we call it cross-functional skills, because they, they, they have these, uh, all the, 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 the team members for, with different skill sets coming together. They make up the project um, uh, uh, team member. They work to contribute to the process of uh, producing deliverables, managing risk, and achieving project uh, goals. Their main responsibilities are solving project objectives, complete tasks in areas of exp expertise, deliver project responsibilities within deadline, communicate with the project lead on roadblocks, and uh, document progress, setbacks, and uh, new processes. So these are what they do. And um, they, they, are pro, they, are, they are business, this is where the business analysts fall in, and this is where the developers fall in, and this is where the testers fall in, and this is where the web designers, um, all, everybody within the, pro, the, the project, this is where all of them fall in, even the scrum master. All of them falling within this uh, this team. The next person we need to um, discuss. A very important person in a project is um, the stakeholders. This is a person or a group who has a vested interest or stake in the project. The project manager must communicate uh, project progress to stakeholders throughout the project life cycle. The main responsibilities of uh, uh, project stakeholders uh, include uh, commit and provide appropriate resources to the project and the um, stroke uh, program team. Educate the project stroke the program team about the business and objectives, ensuring the project and the program fits within the business strategy. Provide specific and set of requirements um, priorities. So they, they provide specific requirement and they set priorities for all for the requirement. They make timely decision. They review and provide timely feedback regarding um, relevant projects, progress, work. Promptly communicate changes to requirements. Ownership 
of business processes and procedures and uh, projects to program deliverables. Keep informed of projects to program progress and send information and uh, send information to others who need to know. Assist in establishing and executing training. Approve key projects through program deliverable, if applicable, including final sign off and the acceptance. Identify and resolve any projects through program issues and risk. So that's what the, the stakeholders does. They are there to support the the, pro, the the project, the project um, team members and the project managers. That's what it does. They provide all the necessary support, ranging from resources, uh, clarifying the project um, goals and um, objectives. That's what they actually uh, do. They are very, very important in a project. Project managers, they need to understand them very well because if you don't understand the stakeholders, they will give you tough time. They can derail your project. They can make your project to be very, very unsuccessful. They can delay your project. They can be very harmful to your project if you don't understand them. So you need to understand them. And that's why in project management, stakeholder analysis is one of the key uh, requirements or the key steps a project manager needs to take because you need to understand these people. They can be very beneficial to the project, but they can be very uh, dangerous if you don't manage them very well. So we need, to, as we progress, we'll see how to do uh, stakeholders management, do stakeholder analysis, see all the documents we, we use to, for stakeholder analysis. So these are things we need to know about stakeholders. So these are the, the teams, uh, the, the roles we can find within project management um, uh, teams. So at this point, I will um wait for your questions because you didn't ask any question uh with the first deliverables and this one i expect to have ask question i like um to collaborate with my with my trainees to make sure that they are following our uh, they're understanding what we are doing so i expect question from you guys um, at this point. <clears throat> okay. Kabirat, you are raising your, your hand. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening. I would like to ask the stakeholders, are they like the CEO of the company? Because I see that they hold a very high rank. We have to like respect them, listen to whatever they say, satisfy them and everything. Or is it like a role in the company too, sir? Yeah, yeah. Stakeholders, they are anybody that got interest in that project. You know, anybody. Is not uh, we have stages of stakeholders. So CEOs, they can be stakeholders because they have interest in that um, in that project. Even the staff in that company, a company staff is a stake uh, who works within the project you are you are delivering. For instance, if you are trying to deploy. Uh, customers uh, relationship management software, you find out that there are some staff that works within that environment, like 
uh, customers uh, managers, uh, customer support managers. If you are deploying CRM solution, customer support officers are stakeholders because they are the people that work within that uh, unit, within that department. Uh, CEOs of that company, they are stakeholders if they have a vested interest, because at times a project might be going on in the organization and the CEO does not even know that the project is going on. So in wow. that case, he might not be a stakeholder because he doesn't, he's not aware of the project. It's only those that have vested interest within that project. Okay, sir. These are the people. Project manager is a stakeholder. Um, program manager is the stakeholder. Um, okay. Project sponsor is a stakeholder. Departmental head is a stakeholder. Then other stakeholders can be external stakeholders, like a local government authority. If you are doing a business, your business is, uh, is um, maybe the local government is regulating the way you do your business. You can see, like municipal councils, they are stakeholders. Like if you are doing a project within uh, real estate construction industry, you find out that um, health and safety officers are stakeholders. For instance, if you are doing um, um, data management, like GDPR, then you find out that ICOs, they are stakeholders, regulatory bodies. They are stakeholders. So these are the people that can affect the project. You need to understand all of them because some of them can affect the project positively or negatively. We are not going to go into details of a stakeholder now because we have a full package about stakeholder oh. analysis where you understand stakeholder very well. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any more um, questions? Okay, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, this is Donald. Hi, Donald. Yeah, I, I very well. I have a question, uh, more like a clarification. Okay. I've been following up on um, what you said about the uh, project sponsor, and I'm trying to actually match their roles against that of the uh, project stakeholders. Uh, one of the things you actually said about the sponsor is that they define the objective of the project. So I'm um, like, are they like the end users or for some of us in the uh, customer relating uh, industry are they like the final end users like the customers while yeah. the um, stakeholders okay okay yeah, I like when, I, when i when i when i mean um customers uh, uh because if you are working um uh, within consulting firm like we call clients customers you know, and most time consulting firm, they deploy solution for, for so many companies. So for instance, in a, in a consulting, if, if you are working with um, KPMG, which is a consulting firm and KPMG is managing a project for Access Bank. Access Bank is a customer at this point, or Access Bank is a, a client. So when we are talking about clients, or customers who can be, might be a company. So that's why you see, I, I use the customers or clients and somebody need to represent that customer. Uh, somebody need to represent that client. And the person who is representing that client or the customer, because you are not going to see Access Bank as a person. So you need to see somebody representing Access Bank. And the person within the company, within KPMG that's handling that project is the project sponsor. So that's what the project sponsor means. So he sponsors that project 
and you need to understand why he's sponsoring that project. You need to understand the goals, objective, they authorize the project, they sign project charter that authorizes the project. You need to understand their budgets. You need to know how much they, they, they want to spend on that project. You need to understand the problem they are having, why they are um, uh, initiating the project. And he is the person that have the information. So he's a stakeholder. Just like I said uh, in stakeholder, stakeholder is anybody of got vested interest in that project. So um, project sponsors, they are the biggest stakeholder in a project. They have the power to end the project. They have the power to authorize the project. So they are the big man in the project. If in a, like a company, for instance, uh, let me use the access bank as a scenario. A program manager from access bank, which are initi that is initiating a project can be the sponsor. It must not be from consulting firm. For instance, if, if um, Access Bank is trying to introduce um, a new debit card, somebody is bringing that initiative. And who is that person bringing the initiative? He is the person sponsoring that, pro, that initiative. So he knows the vision. So he's the project sponsor. He's sponsoring that project. He might not really bring in it, but he is the brain behind. So, he is the person that uh, is supposed to be the project um, sponsor. He knows what he tend to achieve from that project. And everybody, uh, because he is the person that needs to convince the management, the directors for this project to go on. And once he has convinced the directors or the top management for this project to go on, they approve that the project should go on, then he should develop the, the plan, the initiative, the benefit plan for the project. Because all of us, the project managers, the business analysts, we don't know what um, the plan or the initiative behind it. So all of us need to cue in, cue in behind the, the sponsor to understand what he's trying to achieve. And during requirement gathering, which is being done by business analysts, is the business analyst that then and the project manager, they need to sit down with the sponsor for him to let them know the requirements and the scope of the project. So that is the project uh, sponsor. I hope I've um, added more lights to that. Yes, sir, very, very, very well, very well. So it's more of the representative and the, the person yeah. possibly casting the vision that everybody needs to run with. Yes, yes. All right. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. So, um, in the absence of any other question, I will introduce what we are going to do uh, in the next class. And um, in the next class, what we are going to be doing is um, this is it project uh, management component. That's now we've understood the we've done the introduction. We've understood what project management is. We've understood all the rules uh, within the project management career, and we have understood the roles within the project management team. Now it's time to drill down into the real integrity of project management. Now we'll start talking project management. So that is what we are going to be doing. And we'll do that in the next class. So this is, uh, so we have to prepare because it's time for, we we'll start getting uh, a bit technical about project management. Start looking at uh, 
documentation, all the necessary documents. So that's what we are going to be doing in the next class. And the next class is going to be on Friday, uh, same time um, on Friday. The, the link will be posted as well. Like I said, it's going to be three times, but I will look at if you can achieve more within the, by after Friday, we'll look if we'll have more class uh, within the weekend. So that is it. If you have any more question, I can take your question, or if you don't have any more question, um, I'll bring this class to an end. Any more question? Okay. Well, thank you for your time for um, tonight's class and see you on Friday. Uh, good night. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night.